Good morning, evening, afternoon, I'm Tato Cat. Welcome to my channel. Today we are playing an adventures tale. Previously, I was stuck in a lot of confusion trying to figure out where and who and what I was doing. And I uh, somehow found my way, got an ally Eleanor. She seems pretty cool. Game does not seem to acknowledge her, her existence. Uh, I found some wolves, found the chick being attacked by wolves. Now I'm finding the wolves, one against the wolves, and now I have to do my overly drawn out epic battle scene with the wolves, even though I've killed like two wolves. And that's where we left off. And hopefully this this chick doesn't get thrown in the, the dungeons like the other one did. Because I don't know how the endings work, but I feel like if I beat the Lich King or whoever the big baddie is at the end, that whichever girl's left is the one I end up with. And I don't want to end up with my current option. Because... Why? That's why. There's like no reason for him to like her. And there's no reason for her to like me. I mean, I guess I saved her. But like, it just, it, it seems like plot wise, developmentally, it's just meh. So anyways, I digress. Let's continue. By now, a sensible wolf would have run with its tail slinked Whimpering as it goes, these dogs can only see one thing. Me dead. Moi dead? Huh. That's what save files are for. Actually, it'd be really annoying if I died. The saving in this game is annoying. <laughs> How quaint. I flourish my blade and send it Flowing around my palm in perfect circle. Seriously, can't can I kill these wolves? Can I get the experience points from killing these wolves? I would love to get the experience points slash money because Eleanor cost me a hundred gold. I grab onto my focus again and sing a bolder tune with my sword song because I'm a bard. My blade whips through the air once again, dismembering and killing with the flare of my station, Swordmaster. The final beast attempts a flinking attack, which I respond to with my right knee and sword plunging down through its spine. I survey the battlefield to make sure my Enemies are dead. I wouldn't want a surprise attack when I'm hurt as I am. Are you alright? The girl was on the floor in terror. The girl who was on the floor in terror rushed to me, concern in her voice and eyes. She's totally unaware she is and what she just went through. Of where she is and what she just went through. I was like, huh? What? Her eyes tell me one thing. She sees someone in need and must help them, no matter the cost to herself. And this girl. I'm not against goodwill, but what I can see here is dangerous. Anyone can take advantage of... Anyone can take advantage of girl with conviction like this. I'm fine, mostly. It's mostly impossible to kill someone like me. <laughs> she doesn't laugh at my joke. And the concern and worry in her eyes doesn't diminish in the least. 
I saw what it did to you. Let me assist you, hero. She moves to take my arm and I halt her with the raised palm. I'm fine. Trust me. Let's head back as we are. Because, I mean, frankly, it looks a lot cooler if I go in covered in blood, no? I turn around and take a step towards the town and promptly fall to the ground like a dumbass. Hmm? What? That's when I realize how weak my body is. Well, you know, after you get bitten in the shin and the leg and have to do backflips and... Um, yeah, that happens. Blood loss, man. Firstly, the pain I put off by focusing hits me like a hammer. Now that my focus is broken. Secondly, my leg is definitely not going to carry me back to town. That much I can tell from pain alone. Thirdly, the girl is looking at me with outright fear, rushing to my aid. Are you okay? Please stop. Let me help you, hero. I tried to escape her help, but it is but a flesh wound. But with my body battered as it is, she quickly suppressed my rebellion and carries me on her shoulder. Well, look, good thing Eleanor is there to help. Carries me on her shoulder to the township. Ugh. This is so shameful. I feel like crying. The hero is being saved by the damsel in distress. The bards would have a field day repeating this tale. Well, you are a bard, it's fine. You could just change the words. She, however, puts aside my embarrassment with a firm look that brooks no nonsense over this matter. I understand your pride, but if you're hurt, you shouldn't feel ashamed to ask for help. I know that. The problem is not about requiring help for being hurt. Heck, hurt being female doesn't even matter, really. It's precisely because she's the person I came to rescue. That's the problem. The rescue don't rescue the rescuer. The dam breaks for Garth. They <laughs> come me forth and I unleash my tears of fury. How could this happen to me? I'm Garth the hero. A look of surprise crosses her face at my word in continual complaints. Then her mouth twitches. My tears and wailing stops immediately, like it never began. I look at her with suspicion, narrowing my eyes sharply. No, you wouldn't. Her face isn't laughing. She's laughing. She's actually laughing at me. She is laughing at me. Well, dude. Yeah. You deserve it. I burst into fitful tears again. The sound of my wailing mixing with her mirthful laughter. Dirt. Of course, the villagers in the outlying village don't even bother to check who is passing this time. 
with the crying sound of a man wailing and a woman laughing. Only God knows what they must be imagining. Probably torture like no man has ever seen. But they are the least of my worries right now. Well, hero, you're really weird. I thought you'd be very arrogant and annoying from the way you fought and the way you look. Hey, you don't just say something like that with only good will in your mind. But you're actually pretty... <clears throat> but you're actually pretty funny. I kind of like you, hero. You're even cooler than I thought. Pretending to cry like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretending. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't actually cry. <laughs> Only a loser would do that. Pretending? She flashed the brightest smile I've ever seen. And for a moment, I feel my pain ebb away, leaving a mild euphoria. What a lovely smile. How did such a beautiful girl come to be in a town like this? We reached the gate, and even though I tried to hide my face in shame, she blurts out my name, <laughs> and the guards all laugh at me. Ugh, why me? These names. <laughs> Gr -G Greya? This is impossible again. The guard looks up because there's a like Garth. Gr Gr Gareth. Gr <laughs> The guards look at each other in confusion. One looks to the other, and then another looks sternly to the girl. The Lord should be waiting for you. I don't know why he sounds like this. He's been worried sick. The men all shared a warm and knowing smile at each other. Greya... Because I'm thinking it's like Raya with G in front of it. <laughs> Greya herself gives a smile as well. Must be a plebeian. <laughs> Must be a plebeian thing. Lord Mast worries too much. Maybe I should give him some cap sleep tea to relax him. Gabs, what? Who would drink something like that? Must be a lesser lord thing. Hmm. <laughs> You do that, Korea. We'll keep watch here for more of the wolves. It is the rest of the caravan. She doesn't respond to that one, however. It doesn't seem to phase her mood. She's practically skips off with me on her arm, humming lightly under her breath. This girl is really positive, isn't she? So hard to believe that life at the bottom rung can bring happiness. But then life at the top rung is also permanently miserable. Is my view of the world skewed due to my background? Only time will tell at this point. 
Level up. Stats have increased. Choose what stats to add additional points to. Um, I chose intelligence. Um, how about some... Uh... Get started. Oh, my mission has been complete. Awesome. I seem to be phasing in and out of consciousness. When I next come to, I'm in an inn. Hello, Madam Carrie. How are sales today? The old woman she's calling out to wipes sweat off her brow with her cloth draped across her shoulders. Her wrinkled relaxing her wrinkles relaxing into a smile. Oh, sweet Greya. Everything is going fine today. Who's the handsome young man with you? The old woman directs a warm smile towards me. She must know from my hair color and face who I am and from my armor what I am. But she smiles at me like I'm her daughter's newest catch. A warm encompassing smile that can only be described as maternal. He's a hero. He saved me from those wolves when I went gathering. The old woman grimaces and casts an apologetic and grateful look my way before training an almost scolding look on Greya. Oh, Greya, dear, you know it's dangerous to go out there with these beasts about. Please exercise more care, my dear. Everyone would be broken hearted to know that anything happened to you. Greya, however, gives a reassuring smile to Carrie as she as if she were the younger of the two of them. Don't worry, Madam Carrie. With men like this hero here around, I have nothing to fear. I want to point out the obvious fact that my appearance was simply chance and I may not be around next time, but I hold my tongue. Seemingly so does Madame Carrie. She visibly lets the matter drop as there is no beating Greya's optimism. And stuffs her with fruits from her basket. Take this and feed it to the young hero. He might be grateful for it. I probably would. But for some reason, I feel very light and dizzy right now. Oh! I can't take this from you without paying, madam. It's not fair to you. Everything is starting to do... Everything's starting to double up and fold in on itself. There's two Kreyas and two Madam Carries, as far as I can see. Oh dear, why must you be so stubborn over this all the time? It's a token of affection. From me to you. I feel weight lump itself on my shoulders, even though another is supporting mine. Things start to spin ridiculously in my eyes. But still, madam, I could just as easily pay for it and make your day easier. A smile from you is worth any coin I have. I see less and less as the seconds flit by, 
Blackness creeps from the edge of my vision. Hello, my darkness, my old friend. Okay. <laughs> Consuming sight as it heats towards the center from all sides. Uh, blacking out over here. Help. Help. Still, it doesn't mean that... Oh, God, Greya, the hero's bleeding badly. Oh, I'm just bleeding out. Lovely. I'm not just about to pass. I'm dying. <laughs> the last thing I see before blackness finishes my con... Some... Consummation is Greya's panicked expression. The first thing I feel as I wake up is pain. Pain in my arms and even more in my legs. I try to push myself up to my waist, but I only manage to get as far as my head up before I collapse back down, panting from the effort. My head feels like it's been stuffed with wool. Thought and reasoning are luxury to me right now. I open my eyes slowly and almost gasp at the way the room spins. The blurring feels as if someone thrust me underwater. After a few moments of hard breathing and silent cursing, my eyesight becomes as good as I can hope for and I look around. Am I room fit for a lord or a lordling? The bedroom is well furnished and linens and silk for the bed are rich in quality. How did I get here? My room in the swallows dive in is certainly above average, but this is too much like home. I do faintly recall the guard saying something about Greya and the Lord. Could she be his daughter? Yes, that might explain the good treatment. Saving a Lord's daughter might even secure you a formal invitation into their family. I flex my muscles softly and carefully trying to get some feeling back into them. After a while, I'm able to successfully push myself up to my waist, swinging my legs over to the side of the bed. The moment they hit the floor, however, I actually gasp in surprise. A very large gasp that could also have been a shout of pain. Gasp, shout, same thing. My legs, ugh, feels like hell. Will it ever heal if it hurts like this? I don't think I can even put an ounce of my weight on it. I want to keep from bawling like a baby in pain. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made, but this is too much. Maybe I should have evaded. I'd have probably survived then. I hear a quick shuffling of feet outside my door. Someone must have been set to guard me, and they heard my cry in agony. Soon the shuffling returns and the door opens to admit a worried Greta, Greta, Greya, whatever her name is. Are you okay? I tried dressing the wound, but it was beyond me. So we called the village herbalist and the doctor as well. But they... I silence her by raising my hand. Her torrent of words ceased like they never began, and she watches me with worry. Still the prominent emotion in her expression. 
I see. Will I ever walk properly again? I asked the question that was foremost on my mind since I tested my foot. The question was one that I should have been asked in a circumstance. A circumspect way, but I need to know. From her torrent earlier, I have an idea of the answer, but I still want to hear it. Greya hesitates for a second, and her face becomes firm, meshing with the tone of her voice as she speaks the fact to me. In the simplest way possible, Okay, great. Fantastic. I don't believe it because the look on her face. No. You will never walk again, hero. At least I'm well enough to fight like you did had like you had before. I lower my hand and nod my head. As expected. It was the only obvious conclusion. If a herbalist and a doctor looked at me and nothing has changed my leg's health. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made. Sometimes too. You can never know how deep that sacrifice will be. Greya gives me a concerned look, but nothing of pity and sympathy in it. At least she knows better than to give me that. So, I can still fight. Just with a huge handicap. I give her a smile that she doesn't return. For a peasant, she's very sharp. In fact, is she a peasant? Who exactly is she? I lower my head and ask her. Me? I am a humble servant in the service of the Lord Master, Lord of Erbor. My name is Greya, as you may have heard. What's yours, hero? Hmm. A servant? Her? With her level of beauty? With that complexion and those features? My name is Gareth. I am an adventurer, as you know or was, but... I raised my head up to look at her while speaking, and it hits me like a blow... When... A blow winding me up completely. A blow winding me completely. Blow winding me completely? Okay. <laughs> How did I fail to see this? I understand I was injured on the way here and I was distressed during the battle, but that is no excuse. White hair green eyes and an almost ethereal beauty she she is are you still hurt from your leg we managed to get everything else healed do you need anything Garth I continue staring at her like it's my first time seeing her as it, it actually is and speak the words so slowly so slowly the feel foreign the word so slowly the feel foreign okay yes yes I'm fine just a bit tired is all she relaxes a bit and puts on a slightly firm expression her demeanor is nothing like how it should be good 
Please don't ever skirt, skirt, a skirt, skirt. Good. Please don't ever exert yourself until you're better. Promise me, guys. I promise. But what about you? She blinks in surprise, taken aback by my strange question. Well, I'm not sick, but if you want, I can check up on you until you're better. Said with a smile that warms my heart again. No. I shake my head and push away the effect of her smile since I know it's not natural. If she's what I think she is, I can understand why the wolves were after her and continue to attack the village. Any animal that can sense her will try to kill her. How has she survived this long? Even in populated areas, does no one in this peasant town know what white hair and green eyes mean? Well, her eyes are greenish. So maybe they don't. Yes, I'd like that, Greya. Say now. Say, how did you enter into Lord Master's service? She cocks her head to the side and considers my question. I sit patiently, waiting on her answer that will decide my next course of action. Well, we will see what our next course of action is in the next episode. This is, this is all very mysterious. Is she like a homunculus or something? Or like an animal that turned into a person? Or is she like a dead person that turned into a, a live person? Or something like that? And, and whatnot? Well, I guess we'll find out. Until then, see you next time.